2020 has been a challenge for everyone. I mean, I run a video production company based around traveling. Plans I had carefully crafted for various trips throughout the year were canceled one after the other. I decided I had to shift my focus from disappointment over what I could not do and instead plan for what I could do. Challenge my friend Tim to a healthy competition. You see, we had a recent disagreement on who is the more experienced traveler. Tim and I had traveled all over the world and filmed in places like India, Ethiopia, Norway, Iceland, and of course the United States. Each of us believed we were better at planning a trip than the other, so we decided to put our skills to the test. Who could plan the most epic trip across the country from Miami to Seattle in seven days? You could go wherever you wanted as long as you made it to Rialto Beach in Washington State on the final day at 4 p.m. Once the trip was over, a travel agency would grade our trips based on enjoyability, locations, and activities. From those grades, they would declare the winner, who would get bragging rights as the better travel planner. Two other companions were allowed to join us for the competition. I chose to bring along Ethan Swords, a videographer from South Carolina, and Brett Ballantyne, a fire marshal who had also worked for close to a year at Yellowstone National Park. Tim brought along Gabe Thompson, an aspiring cinematographer, and Jared Wise, an electric guitar shredding wizard. Three months later, we were packing our bags and heading out to Miami, Florida, with one small problem. The rental cars we booked were not there. Shut up, it hurts to get our rental cars. Okay. Man, a big leg down. They, uh, we had reservations for two cars. They're completely out of vehicles. Yeah, completely. We got to come back in the morning at like eight o'clock. And there's no guarantee. Apparently, they can never make a guarantee. There's no guarantee that there's going to be a car. Yeah. This trip was off to a great start. So the next morning with three hours of sleep, we were finally able to get our rental cars and get a late start to our 4,000 plus mile journey to the West Coast. Not wanting to skip over Florida, my team made the first stop of the trip at Devil's Den Prehistoric Cavern. Devil's Den was formed when a roof over a subterranean river collapsed, exposing a hidden river and vast underwater caves below. The water is a constant 72 degrees, making a plume of vapor visible above the surface during the winter. Because of this, it was dubbed Devil's Den by natives who believed it to be a chimney to hell. Several extinct animals and human remains dating back to 7500 BC have been found in the watery depths below. I think this might be one of those parts of our trip that's gonna beat the other team just because of how cool it is. I'm really excited, really excited. Ethan, what were you gonna do, man? How are you gonna swim? How are you gonna swim? Well, see, there was this accident I was involved in. This uh, drunk driver hit me as I was like walking. It kind of- Let's kinda, see the scar, man. Let's kinda, see the scar. Yeah, you kinda did see. something to my- Woo-wee. Arm, so Ooh. got a metal plate in there. Anyway, man. supposedly I can lift up to like 10 pounds now. Supposedly. So yeah. I might end up, uh, you know, paddling kind of like just in circles. Oh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Arm. I'm going to do my best to like go in a straight line, but yep. I might end up making some circles. All right. There goes John. I guess I'm next, unfortunately. So what a cave feels like. All right. Oh, this is there it is right there. Well, I feel like a big old platypus or something. But yeah. Uh, well, you look like you're straight platypus, and, man. <laughs> so, here's that. John. He's all snorkeled out, but. I haven't seen him go under yet. Here we are. 72 degrees water. And uh, it definitely felt like 72. When we first got in, but uh, it's uh, you get used to it real fast. And it is absolutely stunning. While my team made our first stop of the trip early on, Tim's team decided not to stick around Florida and gain as much ground as they could in the first day. Just crossed into Georgia a few minutes ago. It is a little before four o'clock in the afternoon, and we are a little over 200 miles from Atlanta. It's gonna be crazy, but it's gonna be well, well worth it for all the places that we're gonna see along the way. Oh yeah, the next two days are gonna suck. 
Tim's team strategy was to cover as much ground as they could in the early part of the trip. On the first day, they were attempting to drive from Miami to St. Louis, a 17 and a half hour drive, not including stops. While they cover a lot of ground with this strategy, they open themselves up to fatigue early on in the trip. I got the rock star parking everybody wants Out on the street, 40 feet from the bus stop Cause every day and every day So catch this, it is 2.20 central time, 3.20 eastern And uh, Jared the champ here, cranking it out on the drive He's decided to go the hot dog route About 30 minutes away from where we're gonna be Grinding bro <laughs> So we just got into St. Louis. It's almost 3.30 in the morning central, which would be 4.30 in the morning Eastern. John and I went, woke up at six this morning to go eat the rental cars. I'm exhausted. We've got another early morning tomorrow, so I'm gonna go hit the bed. While Tim's team had covered a lot of ground in the first day, my team's strategy was a little different. We decided to pace ourselves over the course of the week so we wouldn't get burnt out. After leaving Devil's Den earlier that day, we drove nine hours and stopped for the night in Nashville. Oh, we finally got to Nashville at what, two in the morning Eastern time, one in the morning Central time, so at least we gained an hour. Gotta get up at uh, 6.30 again tomorrow. I am 100% sure we're beating Tim and all of them, so we've, we've already, we definitely won day one, let's put it that way, so till tomorrow. At the beginning of day two, both teams combined had already driven an incredible 2,135 miles. Tim's team got an early start to the second day of the trip and began their push further west into some trouble they hadn't expected. Hey guys, my name is Gabe. Uh, I am one of the members from team two here. We are just passing through uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Um, we got into St. Louis at 3 a.m. last night and we are headed to a place called Monument Rocks. Well, we've been driving for a while. Uh, as you can see, we're pretty much in the middle of nowhere. We passed Courage the Cowardly Dog's house somewhere along the way. But uh, we ended up at a really cool spot. Monument Rock out here. The National Weather Service in Kansas has issued a dust storm warning for the area surrounding Monument Rock National Landmark. At 11 a.m. Central Time, a wall of dust was along a line extending from near Shields and Grove City, moving west at 20 miles per hour. Hazard less than a quarter mile visibility with strong wind in excess of 40 miles per hour. Impact, dangerous life-threatening travel. Holy crap, so we were at Monument Rock, and we just saw off in the distance, like it looked like a pretty legit dust storm, but we were like, ah, it's probably fine. Within like 10 seconds, we're getting surrounded by dust. It's getting all in the car. And we're like, oh, we gotta go right now. So we just piled in and we're trying to get ahead of this thing. But I mean, you can't see a thing behind us really back there. It's pretty nuts. While Tim's team was escaping the sandstorm, my team was getting our day started with a quick drive to Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. It's day two, and we are all exhausted, but uh, it's going to be a great day. I'm looking forward to today a lot. We have, uh, we're have we going to Mammoth Cave to do a, a, a self-guided tour. Later on, we're going to Chicago to get some deep dish pizza. Woo! And I know Brett Woo! especially really excited about that. So excited about pizza, man. I can't wait. Uh, we are now at Mammoth Caves uh, National Park. So uh, we're excited. Uh, I've never been here before. John, I think it's the only one of us that's ever been here. What is this, John, your third time here? Uh, I'm, uh, I've been here a lot. Maybe okay, like fifth, He's or sixth time. fifth or sixth time. So nothing new for John. I've been here a lot as a kid. But, um, but you're, you're not recording right now. Am I not? No, you are. Just kidding. No, thank you. <laughs> God, I don't know how these things work, man. Uh, we're gonna go inside. We're gonna have a good time. Ethan's gonna pull some more jokes and think he's all funny and crap, but he's not. No fun. Mammoth Cave is the longest known cave system in the world, with more than 400 miles of surveyed passageways and more yet to be explored. Native Americans use this cave as a burial site, with remains from various eras having been discovered inside the cave. 
This cave is massive. I mean, the, the geological formations that are here are just incredible. Oh, it's awesome. I love Mammoth Cave. Definitely the best tour we could have done, I think, going through Kentucky. I mean, I'm just loving to see all the different things that have, uh, that have changed throughout the years, like this right here. I mean, this yep. is pretty incredible. This, uh, this passageway just being completely blocked and stuff mm -hmm. through erosion. Pretty neat. Yeah. Just video does not do justice. You have to see this in real life for yourself. It's amazing. As we headed out from Mammoth Cave National Park, we continued our trek north, making a quick stop in the Chicago area for some deep dish pizza. Okay, so I just finished my first piece of deep dish Chicago pizza and oh my gosh. Oh look, see you have to cut it. You have to cut it. It's like, it's literally like pie or something. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We are in Chicago. It's been a great day too on this trip so far. So uh, looking forward to what tomorrow's got going on. It's incredible how far we've come in two days. We were in Miami yesterday and now we're all the way in Chicago. Crazy to see how fast the landscape of the country changes just in two days. We're gonna head to Milwaukee right now to get some sleep and uh, we'll see you guys in Milwaukee. Back out west, Tim's team had managed to escape the sandstorm and had arrived at the stopping point of the night in Alamosa, Colorado. They had driven over 2,000 miles in the first two days, 500 miles more than my team had driven so far during the trip. While they had not been able to stop and do much during the first two days, their trip was really about to start in day three. All right, boys, what's uh, what's going on right now? Hey, what about the idea? Great Sand Dunes National Park. What time is it? It's uh, the stadium. What time is it? 5.43. Let's go. 5.43 in the morning. Locked. Loaded. It's going to be super cold. At the start of day three, Tim's team had an early morning and a quick drive to their first stop of the day at Great Sand Dunes National Park. Trying to catch the sunrise there uh, to see the colors just reflecting off the sand. Super excited to see that. We are, it's a little after six o'clock, and we are looking at really trying to get there right now because there is already, I don't know if you can see in the distance, there's some light coming up over the mountains already. Um, so really trying to get there before that light does. Look at this. Look at how far it is. sand dunes in North America, rising to a height of 750 feet and covering over 30 square miles. The valley used to be covered in lakes tens of thousands of years ago, slowly receding and forming these massive sand dunes. The oldest evidence of human life here dates back 11,000 years, when nomadic hunter-gatherers sought the herds of mammoths and prehistoric bison that populated this area. Back in Milwaukee, my team was just getting our day started. We are heading to um, Lake Michigan this morning. Uh, shoot, he's sending it up right outside my window. So we're heading to Lake Michigan this morning. We're going to check out the lake and uh, it's really, really windy out. So it should be some nice waves. We decided to make a quick stop by Lake Michigan at Sheridan Park, right outside of Milwaukee. Day three and we're about to go see the Great Lakes because you cannot miss one of those yeah. on this kind of trip. Gotta go see the Great Lake when you're around a Great Lake. Yeah, it looks pretty great. It's, uh, it's that way, Ethan. It's, uh, oh. Oh. That's, a That's a great pond. Oh. <laughs> Lake Michigan is one of the five Great Lakes of North America, the second largest by volume. It is, however, the most dangerous lake in America. It is estimated that nearly 10,000 vessels have perished into its depths and 30,000 people have died in this lake over the modern era.
as we finally turned our sights westward, Tim's team was wrapping up their time at Great Sand Dunes National Park with one final activity. Been out here about four hours now. Got all the shots and everything, but uh, so we, uh, we got some sleds and we're gonna trek our way to the tippy top or wait. as far as our bodies will let us go. Wait, did you just say sleds? Yes, we wait, wait. sleds. All right, let's do this. Here we go. Oh, I'm falling for sure. Oh man. Oh man. So good. <laughs> this is so bad. Great Sand News National Park is incredible. Highly, highly recommend. Gabe was saying it feels like another world, which I would agree with. But we are a little tired, hiking in sand, like sand mountains basically. Not super easy. Um, but looking forward to getting in the car and uh, driving through the mountains of Colorado and heading over to Shiprock. While Tim's team began their drive towards Shiprock, New Mexico, my team found ourselves lost in the Wisconsin Dells. So this is it. We're lost again. This is not uh, John and I's first time yeah. being lost together. I'm gonna tell you something. We've been lost on so many hikes we've been on. Yeah. But you see this time, this time though, John was trying to utilize GPS. So we didn't quote unquote get lost, but here we are. Yeah, private properties like there, there, there. While my team was trying to find its way back to civilization, Tim's team was almost to their next location. Now we're on the way to Ship Rock, New Mexico um, to see this really cool rock formation. Um, yeah, so we're gonna take some pictures there and some videos, and then we're gonna be staying in an Airbnb at close to there in a hut in the mud um what's it called again it's called a hogan it's a navajo hogan. a navajo hogan uh don't know kind of don't know what to expect saw a picture it's a mud hut and don't really know what to expect other than that <laughs> began the drive to their stopping point for the night in Arizona, my team, after two hours of trying to find our way out of the Dells, finally made it back to our car. What's up guys? Need a ride? You like what you saw? From there, we had a long nine hour drive to our hotel in Wall, South Dakota. In the next video, we journey farther west dealing with dangerous road conditions. We're gonna live fighting every day. Scenic California coastlines. Uh, we had to climb down very steep trails. In the towering mountains of the Rockies before we meet up in Rialto at the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs>